It's all the waiting, anticipation, the weeks of practicing alone in your bedroom. <laughs> Come down to these just five minutes. It's like losing your virginity all over again. <laughs> Except that only took two minutes. <laughs> well, hopefully this time I won't cry. <laughs> you laugh, but we've all got faults. We've all got faults. When I got told mine the other day, I got told my big fault. And someone looked to me and he said, you're annoying. <laughs> annoying. 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 So I got stuck in a loop there. Where, where was I? Oh yeah, annoying. <laughs> oh, I got told my big fault and it's really hard to hear your big fault from someone else for the first time. Because when you're growing up, you live in quite a sheltered life. Your parents want you to do well, your teachers tell you you're great. Even your therapist wants all the best for you. <laughs> and you live in this bubble, this bubble of love and happiness, and this bubble that really, you know, it supports you and protects you, and then I've got a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend loves a good fault. <laughs> I'm not just annoying, I'm also needy, lazy, useless, <laughs> horny, inappropriate. <laughs> My girlfriend sees herself as the Snow White of relationship problems. So my girlfriend doesn't fuck dwarves. <laughs> Not that I look down on dwarves. <laughs> you're grown, but that's the only joke in the set. You pay two quid, you get what you pay for. <laughs> So I try to be a bigger man, I try to be sort of metrosexual in touch with my feelings and, and talk to her about it and say, So when am I annoying? When am I annoying? When she stopped crying, she told me I was most annoying when we went shopping. She's annoying when we go shopping, I'm fucking livid. She drags me out to the arse end of East London on a Saturday afternoon. Drags me around, makes me look at dresses and have, give opinions on clothes I don't really ha have. What happened there? <laughs> <laughs> and they drag you out to these shopping centres in the arse end of East London. And these places are alcohol free zones. Have you heard three more depressing words in your life than alcohol free zones? And you can't even leave your girlfriend, you can't even go off and look for clothes for yourself. Because the menswear department's so fucking far away. <laughs> it's through women's wear, children's wear, jewellery, haberdashery, out the back, up the stairs, through the car park, out into the jungle, on the second bush on the right. <laughs> and even then, the shop assistant just circle you and judge everything you're buying. Well, you like that, do you? <laughs> Dick. <laughs> it's tough because it's like a sport for my girlfriend. It's tough. It's like her football. And she loves doing it on a Saturday. She really does. She'll go off just to watch other women shop. I don't know how you do that. It's a spectator sport for her, but you can't commentate. Oh, God, no. Enchanted's definitely out. I tried a chorus of Who Ate All the Pies in Evans. So no one joined in. A few disapproving looks, actually. And they start to fuck with you, these bastards who run these places. It's the shop assistants, they're dicks. And you, have you seen, have you seen, have you seen where they put the waiting area for men? You know that little area with two puffs? <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> two puffs and a couch. Have you seen that three foot by four foot area? Have you seen it, so when you're out shopping? Have you seen it's like a crash, but shit. <laughs> Have you seen that? Have you seen where they put that? They put it next to the change rooms, next to the giant wall of underwear. The massive great wall of underwear. One of the few man-made structures that's visible from space. The top shop wall of underwear. And you can't fucking look. Because the queue's there, isn't it? All the women sitting there, looking at you, judging you. Me and all the other plebs are really interested in our shoes at this point. But do you know what the worst thing is? The worst thing is that it makes it intolerable. Do you know the average age of a woman shopping, sir? On a Saturday afternoon, 12. <laughs> you try not looking like a paedophile or two 12 girls. 
discuss the differing med merits of thongs versus the French knickers. It's ridiculous. Oh, well, the thong's sexier, but the French knicker sports my heart's more. What do you reckon, Sinead? <laughs> I need to sit there going, I'm going on a fucking register. I'm going on a register. <laughs> it's awful. And my girlfriend, she starts to get annoyed because she can't leave her. You just follow her around like a puppy, just popping up from behind every display going, can we go here? Can we go here? Can we go here? <laughs> and after eight hours, eight hours of wandering around fucking Stratford, She's starting to get annoyed. She really, she wants to try on stuff. I've been telling her everything's horrible because I'm not going back there with the plebs. I'm not standing there being entertainment for all the women in the queue next to the great ball of underwear. I'm not doing that again. If she stops to throwing feints and dummies, she's going to lose me. She's spotted a dress she likes, but she's not letting me ruin it. And so she's going on and on about straps versus non-straps. And backless and tan lines. I lost concentration in that second. In that second, ladies and gentlemen, she's off. She's off like a cheetah being fine out of a can and a pile of zebra burgers. She's fucking gone. <laughs> Fighting shop assistants, children, mannequins, they're flying all over the shop. I'm fucking off after her. I'm not getting left there again. I'm not getting left there again. And you've got to remember, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to remember it's been eight hours. I was tired. And I couldn't go, I couldn't go through it again. I couldn't. And so I did something drastic. And I'm not proud of it. <laughs> and everything went into slow motion. I was legging it after her. And everything went into slow motion, you know, like it does in films. I could just hear myself, like an out-of-body experience, go, No! And I jumped for her ankle. <laughs> Fuck <that. laughs> oh, And I broke the fucking stage. <laughs> And she just looks down at me with disdain and disgust and says, What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and I look up at her, tired, <sighs> beaten into submission, afraid. <laughs> and I just say, Nothing, darling. I'll just wait over there, shall I? <laughs> Buy the underwear. She's <laughs> too fucking right, you will. <laughs> Stop following me around, please. <laughs> it's getting really fucking annoying. <laughs>